Spinner slash cargo van ownership. Make the best of your opportunities. And that's what I want to share on this segment of the Gig Geezer. If this is your first time checking out the Gig Geezer or if you're a returning visitor of the Gig Geezer, thanks for coming by. And if you would not mind, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. I am actually on site here in Union, South Carolina. Where the fuck is Union, South Carolina? It's about 35 minutes east of Spartanburg, South Carolina. It's a place that I'm familiar with in my days as a newspaper reporter because I worked in Spartanburg, the last place I worked at. Um, Union was known as a textile town. Um, it's It has shown signs since I last came through here a long time ago that it's begun to diversify its uh, economy. And I think a lot of it has to do really with the success of the foreign investment that has uh, been a steady flow for over the last 30 years. This area, this entire area, this corridor, um, this entire corridor, the I-85 corridor, um, has uh, fared better than other parts of the state. Um, the other part of the state that has done probably just as well is the, is the Charleston, South Carolina area. So it's like the opposite ends of, of the state. But that said, I'm going to share five points that I think may help you in terms of um, having the right mindset to make the best of your opportunities. And then I'm going to share an actual story of some of some known personalities in the sports world that often that often spoke of, of opportunity as well. Now, the first thing that it's been my experience in um, having now operated two businesses, one as an insurance agent for the last better part of 20 plus years and now this sprinter slash cargo man operation having um well the pay my paperwork sh says that um i formed this transport operation december 8th of last year so i've been i have been at this for damn near a year now so um i'm getting close to a point where um i may be more qualified to say more things about um operating the ownership and operation of a Sprinter slash cargo van business. But the first thing that comes to mind when you're trying to make the most of your opportunities, making the best of your opportunities, is that you've got to be willing to take chances. Now, I actually on this segment of the Get Geezer, I mentioned how you got to gamble to win sometimes. Well, um, I, I've shared um, in the past where um, I was basically raised at the racetrack and then also um, a, a good part of my uh, younger years was spent at the bowling alleys. And uh, I learned hustling two different ways, playing the horses and, and bowling. Bad combination that I will tell you about, but it, it's those experiences have also helped me in many of the professional things that I've done and even, in some, and even to some lesser extent in the ownership and operation of businesses. This is actually a more applicable um, example of taking chances. Recently, I completed a trip from Charlotte to Temple, Texas. In fact, it appeared on this segment of the Gig Geezer. And it was a situation in which I kind of, I'm not going to say I thought outside of the box, but I took a chance on, on the opportunity. It showed thousand dollar offer going thousand miles I bid 1250 when I got my rate confirmation sheet it was for 1350 there are a couple of things that happened there's a little horse trading that was involved though but initially um, initially I booked it at 1200 but before I picked up the pallets picked up the crates it was 1350 and so in fact, when I even spoke to my broker about it, I told her, I said, I told her that I think I'm taking a chance on this, but let's see what happens. And so she was able to get me 1,200. And then, like I, as I mentioned, before I even picked up the picked up the crates, I was at 1,350. So you have to take chances. You have to do some things that you're not comfortable doing 
if you want to take advantage of opportunities or create opportunities for yourself to make the best of. Not to mention, not to mention, for the two days that I was away from Columbia, I end up earning over $1,900 and almost hit the financial goal of earning somewhere in the neighborhood of about $2,100, $2,200. Actually, I did not hit the $2,100, $2,200 until I got back to Columbia and did some um, working some gig apps. But for the two days away, that was I, I, I was showing signs of improvement in terms of making the best of opportunities while I was out there on the road. The next thing, when you're trying to make the best of opportunities, you don't want to compromise. Now, there's a couple ways of looking at not compromising. There's one school of thought is that when you don't want to compromise, you're unwilling to compromise, you're, you're saying that some people will take it as that you're not willing to adapt. You're obstinate, you're stubborn. And I've been called obstinate and stubborn in my, in my decades. And to some extent, Maybe I still am. Maybe I am truly obstinate and stubborn. I am an old geezer motherfucker who pretty much set in my ways. That's what most people would say. But I also like to think that this old dog have learned a few new tricks, even in re even this year, and that um, I have listened to people as they've shared their experiences with me, and. Um, I've tried to make application of what they're doing. And I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about um, uh, some input by guys who are, I'm old enough to be their father. So you, 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 there, there's a good, there's a good and bad part of um, the, um, of not willing to compromise or not compromising. Now, my thinking about when you compromise as you're operating a spinner slash cargo van is when you begin because things are getting bad in your in your market, you see that the you're not seeing as many um, gig app opportunities. You're seeing that the rates are going down, and you're not making the money that you would like you would like to make or you think you should make or what you are used to seeing. Then you're thinking that okay, well maybe I need to kind of go along with what all these other thirsties are doing. The problem is the problem with that is when you begin to compromise like that, you open the door. You open the door to leave much more money on the table than you would have left if you'd stuck to your guns, stuck to your initial principle of going about doing business. So, have I taken some opportunities on gig apps that um, you would say that I probably shouldn't take? Yes, I have. But by and large, I've not done that. I say it. I say it with utmost confidence and with utmost clarity and sincerity that I don't go after thirst opportunities. I believe, though, eventually I'm going to see an opportunity that's for me, and I'm going to go after it. I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity. Now, the good thing about sometimes when they say that you're not willing to compromise, they want to say that you're a principled person and that you're a principled um, business owner who may be seen as a rarity in today's environment. And oftentimes the principled, the principled business owner is one who often stands the test of time and you look back and you wonder how they do it. And, some, and a lot of it has to do with them not compromising what they have set as their standards. So there's a good and a bad thing about not compromising. The question is, which side of the ledger you want to be seen? I mentioned in the onset, and by the way, if you like the content that's been provided in this segment to Get Geezer and any other segment to Get Geezer, hit this hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. I mentioned in the teaser about there's some um, examples of folk um, of some visibility or in the news, sports people that I am personally familiar with, um, and one of the things that I know that was always a part of their conversation and the few opportunities that I and I actually I um, engaged dialogue with them is that they often spoke of opportunity and one of them even more so than the other. Now I happen to notice this article um, uh, just yesterday, uh, November 9th, two thousand twenty-three, 
And it's talking about Dusty Baker expressing his um, his joy, his relief, his excitement that a longtime good friend of his, Ron Washington, got a second managerial opportunity, despite the fact that he is 73 years old. Dusty himself is 74, 75 years old, Ron 73. But Ron had a previous opportunity with the Texas Rangers in which he actually guided them to, he had a winning record over eight seasons. He actually guided the team to two conse to consecutive World Series appearances and multiple uh, playoff appearances. And he resigned from the Rangers for what I recall. Um, he cited uh, some personal infidelities and all. But when I encountered Dusty like 35 years ago when I was the, when I was first start when I first started out in the business while I was still at Texas Southern Dusty had just completed his just um, he just it completed his playing career he just retired play, from playing and he was um, a, a, a coach on Roger Craig's uh, staff with the San Francisco Giants Dusty then was always an affable person and I remember him hitting the word opportunity from time to time in a few things that we talked about. Now, Dusty wouldn't remember me just like Ron wouldn't remember me. But I, but it's interesting how you remember your dealings with the other person. Ron was someone that I first, um, in, first watched from an immediate distance because I covered the Senior Professional Baseball League in Florida. Ron was on the team. Um, he was on the Palm Beach Tropics team. In fact, I, it took me a while to remember that team, but it was the West Palm Beach, West Palm Beach Tropics. And he was a shortstop on the team. In fact, he was the first player who got a contract, got signed with a major league team from that senior league. Now, um, Ron, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think he made it back up to the big leagues even after signing the contract. But I ran into Ron a couple years later while I was working at Richmond, Virginia. And um, he was the manager. He, no, he was not the manager. He was the third base coach for the Tidewater Tides. And I talked, I happened to talk to Ron. Um, I happened to talk to Ron about, hey, um, I remember you playing with, with um, in Florida a few years ago and I covered your team while, while you played and so on and so forth. And um, he got to talking about how he was looking for the opportunity to manage a team. And, he, and, he, and the word opportunity came up time and time and time and time again. It was opportunity. It's about opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Well, I run into Ron two years later when I'm in Spartanburg, um, the town that's like 30 minutes from here. And Ron was uh, the manager of the Class A Houston Astros team from out of Asheville. Ron was talking opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. That was 1991, the first time I talked to him. This last time I talked to him, 1993. So we're talking 30 years ago. Now, why am, why am I bringing all this shit up? Okay, Ron got his second opportunity. Ron took advantage of the first opportunity and did well, but for whatever reason, he was not afforded that second opportunity. But yet, he got that opportunity, and those who know him know he's going to make the best of that second opportunity. And so that's what I'm getting at with the Sprinter slash Cargo Van um, operation and the ownership and operation of a Sprinter slash Cargo Van. Every day we're out here is an opportunity to not only prove to ourselves, prove to others, but also to to hopefully earn the revenue, to generate the revenue that would, by based on some standards, would be classified as a success. And each day that I'm out here, I see whatever things that come across my phone screen, whatever, whatever conversation I have, I'm constantly looking for opportunity, 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 opportunity. It's a numbers game out here. The opportunities come in numbers, regardless of how slow things may be. It may not be a fat. It might not be a. Um, it may not be a, a very fluid flow of volume, but the opportunities still exist, and that's something that I've had to. I've had to remind myself. Now, in making the most of the opportunity that you have as a spinner slash car event owner, or for that matter, a business owner. We always talk there. We always talk about how we're our own boss and, you know, we ain't got to answer up to no man or no woman or what have you. Hey, this is still an opportunity and you either going to make the best of it or you're going to fuck it up. Which one you're going to do. Now, one thing that will, that will fuck it up is the, the company that you keep. Or it can make the best of the opportunities, the company that you keep. 
Now, I'm going to talk about, you know, the company that you keep. Um, it could be um, people who are really and genuinely in your corner. People who are, who actually, you're, you're like-minded in a good sense in that you're constantly talking about the same type of goals, things that you're looking to accomplish. And what happens is that it becomes an incentive for you to strive to make something better of yourself and to do and to do even more that's a good thing that's competition that's good competition now you can also have the company that is always whining and bitching and moaning and groaning about how nothing comes your way and you're a fucking victim now i've described before that's loser's gimp um but um you know if you're looking to be coddled and you call yourself owning your own business um, you're you're being your own you're being a CEO and all. If you're looking to be coddled, you're you're not cut out to be running the business. You better go back to being a W two where you can be coddled in in some work situations. The next thing I want to share um, with respect to making the most of opportunities, making the most of your opportunity, making the best of your opportunity, is that you you want to write down your goals. You want to write down your goals. It's something about writing down goals. And that's something I've done since childhood. And I've noticed in even recent years, everything that I've written down that I've set out to do, I've checked it off, checked it off, checked it off, checked it off, checked it off. In fact, when I met my queen um, several years, a number of years back now, actually it's five years ago. When I met my queen, the queen of my life five years ago, there were things I told her that I was looking to do. And, she, and I've reminded her of that. And every single thing that I told her, I have done and more. But everything that I told her that I was going to do were things that I wrote down. Now, it speaks of write the vision clearly on the tablet so that he who run may read it. Now, when it speaks of writing the vision clear, clearly on the tablet so that he who runs may read it, it's like a billboard. You're writing down these goals to where they're like every time you pass by them, it's like a billboard. And it's a reminder of what you're setting out to do. Now, some people may think that you're a fucking weirdo. You're 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 a geek and a dork for doing that. But guess what? You're setting you're setting the goal out there. You're setting the prize out there before you that you're going to strive and work every day to get to. And that's regardless of what people got to say. And that brings me to my last point. Don't be afraid to talk about your goals. Okay, and turn when you're make, when you're trying to when you're trying to make the most of your opportunity. Don't be afraid of talking about your goals. Now, I'll let you in on this. If you go back to earlier segments of the gig geezer, as in my sprinter slash cargo van um, experience, I spoke of goals. I spoke of those goals. In fact, I went back and uh, um, kind of as a as a reminder in this segment to ge get geezer when I spoke of um, your break point and all. I said how those goals was actually uh, talking of that break point to where I'm in a pro where I began to show a profit, a true profit in the business. Now, when you when you when you begin to talk about goals, you put a target on your back, and I've shared how. There have been folk on the channel and they and their comments on the channel. You know, some folk would be cynical and say, Well, god damn it, you've asked for comments, you got your fucking comments. Yeah, you goddamn right. I got my fucking comments. But here's my opportunity to share some of the comments that were said. But the question is, what do you do when they begin to hurl those rocks? and arrows and spears and boulders and chains and whatever else they can get their hands on and, and they're and they're hurling them at you or in your in your vicinity. I remember some I had to go back and scroll through some of those earlier comments. Some of the comments that I recall that were said and these are those these are the ones these are the ones that kind of make mockery or decree decree the goals that you're 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 um, articulating. What I've learned is that some people don't understand what you're doing, so they so you're talking about something that's out of their comfort level, so they're they're quick to talk shit about you and to you. So here's some of the things that one person said. You should be making more money considering you have a van. Try bungling driver. You're the only one, you're the only YouTube delivery person 
that we never see you actually doing any real deliveries. Bro, sell me your van. Ignore every single word this man says. This man is disabled. The best one that, I, that someone told me was, all these gigs you be doing can be done in a regular car with way better gas mileage. It seems like the van was a waste of money if the majority of your rides are $9 food rides. Just trade it in for a car. Now, this, these comments were made nine months ago. I'm in a transition going from working primarily out of an F-150 doing primarily gig food delivery apps to where I'm beginning to put myself in a position to where I can use the van for what I intended it for. But when you're, when people don't see that, they're quick to, they're quick to say things that take shots at you. But meanwhile, I continue to articulate my goals. I continue to articulate what I was looking to do, getting up to earning four five hundred dollars four and five hundred dollars in a day, earning eight to nine thousand dollars in a month. Well, I'm doing the four and five hundred dollars in a day. I've said many times recently that I'm accustomed now to earning four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars in a day. I also have, I've also gotten beyond the eight and nine thousand dollars in a month to earning, or at least the business is generating. The business is generating $10,000 or more consecutive months. So, you ask the question, are you making the most of your opportunities? Are you making the best of your opportunities? Only you know. But hopefully some of the things that I, I've shared with you will get your mind towards thinking about those things. And with that, if you like the content that's been provided in this segment of the Gig Geezer and any other segment of Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button. Give my content a thumbs up. Share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. I'm Inwood Lane, and as always, may your grind and may your hustle continue.